really far from his house. It was like a 20 minute drive. And he was like, you don't come in my house, you're gonna regret it. And you know what, right now I see demons dancing on your forehead. Hi friends, welcome back. And if you're new, welcome. My name is Nikki. And today I have another Nikki's Nightmare Date Story Time. I don't know what the heck to call these. If you are new around here, I did my first ever story time video about a week and a half ago. If you haven't seen it, I'll leave a link to it down below. Warning, there are some flashes in the video because I edited that video on my laptop as opposed to my big editing computer. So if you can just deal with the flashes, it's like green flashes throughout the video. It's a really good, funny, kind of weird story. I'll leave a link to it down below. Let's jump into this one. I need to give this guy a fake name. Let us call him. I always want to say John, but that's so boring. He was Italian and African American, and I used to call him the Italian Stallion. So we'll just call him the Italian Stallion. So <laughs> this was a very short dating romance. It was about two months that I was dating this guy, two months. There were some warning signs that this man was not all there. I should have been more sane. I was very, very young when this story happened. So keep this in mind because there were signs that this guy was absolutely psycho. We'll get to that. I was very young, very naive, and I had just moved to Los Angeles and moved to Los Angeles and I was lonely. So let's just jump into it. So been dating the Italian stallion for two months. There were signs that he was psycho. I will probably do those in the upcoming story time videos. So for one of our dates, we always used to have like really fun dates. It was a really fun. It started as like a summer thing. I think it started literally in May and it was over by July. So for one of our dates, he was like, you know, he kept texting me throughout the week, emailing me. I really want to take you grocery shopping. That was one of the, his things that he liked to do. He's like, I want to cook for you. Let's go, I want to take you grocery shopping. We'll do it at my place. I'm like, okay, great, sure. So we go grocery shopping. We go to this grocery store in Los Angeles that's called Ralph's. Um, I think on the West Coast, they're owned... On the East Coast, they're owned by the same people that own Safeway, because I'm from the East Coast, so I know Safeway. If you know Safeway, it's Safeway, Ralph's, I think they're the same thing. So we go to this grocery store, and he's like, get whatever you want, and I wanted to make Italian food, so I was like getting all this stuff, organic cheeses, when I used to eat cheese, and organic pastas, and this is before my food allergies, I remember. I think back to this, like, oh my God, I ate all that stuff, and I didn't get sick, but those days are gone i can't eat any of that stuff anymore so i'm like getting all this stuff we get to the cash register and um it was self-checkout you know you scan it yourself you guys have all seen that and it came up to a lot it was like i think 200 no actually i think it was like 120 bucks which was a lot back then i never used to spend that much money on food i was eating like pizza and chicken wings every night i used to eat so bad so we get to the cash register and he pulls out a card and I notice it's in um, a food stamp card, EBT card. If you don't, you guys know what food stamps are, but if you don't know, it's a government assistance program that allows you to purchase food using your electronic card. I think back in the day you would actually use like paper food stamps. So it's money you get from the government to pay for food for people who meet the income requirements. And so when I saw that he was paying with that, I promise you, I swear to you, the first thing that came to my mind, I thought if this guy, I had no idea that he was receiving government assistance the two months we had been dating. Um, that'll be another story time. There were some clues now that I think about it because he did lie about like what he did. He said he was a writer for TV shows. Not true. He said he had his own place. I found out he had four roommates, whole other story. So there were some signs that maybe he wasn't as financially stable as he said he was. So I thought, my thought when I saw that was, if you're getting assistance from the government to buy food, I don't wanna waste that money on me just making like some extravagant Italian like meal. He probably needs this, you know? He probably needs that money to feed himself throughout the month. I don't want to spend 120 bucks of his money that he might need to feed himself. So that's literally what came to my mind. He saw this as a whole other thing, I guess. So he goes to pull it out. He's about to pay. And I'm like, oh, no, no. I say it very quietly. The grocery store was very packed. I didn't want to make a scene. I didn't want him to feel embarrassed. I just said, oh, um, you know what? It's okay. I'll, I'll pay for it. And he's like, this is what he says, guys. And I'm gonna make this as dramatic as possible. I'll probably put a sound effect because this is how it was. He was like, 
Don't you dare touch that machine. Literally like that. That's what he said. And his face looked like that. And I was like, okay. With all the other signs this guy has given me over the two months, he's lying about his income, lying about who he lives with, and now he's talking to me like... It was almost like he became possessed. And I was like... Silly me. Most women would have just been like, okay, whatever, and let it go. But I'm so persistent. I was like, no, no, it's okay. And I, I'm whispering to you. I'm like, no, no, it's okay. I'll pay for it. It's not a big deal. He's like, if you touch that machine, you're going to be sorry. And I was like, oh, fuck. Like, this guy, no. I was like, this is it. I don't know what's wrong with him. He's freaking out. So I just let him pay. And then one of the grocery store workers comes over because we were literally standing there going back and forth. And she's like, is everything okay? He's like, everything's fine, thank you. He turns into like some sweet man again. Everything's fine, thank you. But then when he's talking to me, he's like, don't you touch that machine. So I was like, okay. So we go to my car. I had driven us there, oh God. And he's like, we get in the car and he's like, everything's normal. And I was like, um, do you want to talk about like why you got so upset? I wasn't trying to embarrass you or anything. And he's like, you know what? Sometimes I think you have demons inside of you. No joke. He wasn't laughing or anything. And I was like, oh shit. Like this guy's like really lost his damn mind. And I was like, okay, so when we get back to your place, you're gonna take the groceries inside, I'm gonna go home, and you're not gonna talk to me anymore. That's what I said, verbatim. And so by this point, I'm like driving to his house because the grocery store we went to was really far from his house. It was like a 20 minute drive. And he was like, you don't come in my house, you're gonna regret it. And you know what, right now I see demons dancing on your forehead. This is many, many years later, so I can laugh now, but that night I was really scared for my life because I was like, what the hell happened to this guy? There have been signs that he was not all mentally sane, but being the dumb, silly girl that I was, I still kept seeing him because he was fun, but I never thought he was psychotic. So I'm like, holy crap, I might die tonight. How do I get this guy out of my car? And he was a very big guy. I've always liked bigger, men and when i say big he was like six five like 250 pounds like really big guy i thought not six five i think he was like six three so i'm like how can i get him out of my car so and i was about to pull over he's like don't you dare pull over the demons on your forehead are telling you to pull over he keeps mentioning these demons on my forehead he's saying that there's demons on my forehead and i'm a demon black woman and Black women are so unappreciative, and I'm just, literally, what he's saying is like in one ear out the other. I'm like, okay, if I need to jump out of the car while it's moving, or can I call 911? Can I like call my friend so they can hear what he's saying? I'm just thinking of how the hell I can get out of this. So um, we finally get to his house. It was the longest 20 minute ride of my life. And so I was like, you can take your groceries. Um, thank you so much. Take care. I don't know what I said. I think it was something like, take care. Thank you so much. You can take your stuff. I just want to go home. And he's like, if you don't come in my house, you're going to be so sorry. And we can just forget all of this. It's the demons on your forehead talking. I'm not joking. He was, this is how he said it. Very serious. And I was really terrified. And I was like, this guy's having a psychotic break. So I was like, please get out of my car. Take your groceries or I'm gonna call 911. He's like, I'm not getting out of this car. You can get out of the car. I'm not getting out of the car. I was like, if you don't get out of the car, I'm going to call 911. So he doesn't get out of the car. I call 911 and it literally, I called them, let's say it's nine o'clock. By 9.20, they still weren't there. And he was just sitting there as I'm like, hello, I have an intruder in my car, he won't get out. 9.20 still didn't show up. So I was like, you know what, screw this. I'm just gonna leave my car. I'm gonna leave the trunk open. He can take his groceries and hopefully when the cops get there, he'll get out. So that's what happened. I literally got out of my car. I was horrified. I was like, I can't stay here. I don't even care about my car. I just care about my life. So I got out of my car. I left the trunk open. I said, you can take your crap and just leave before the cops get here, but I'm walking and you better not follow me. So I got out and I started walking and he's like, you're a demon, bitch. 
you're a demon bitch. He just kept screaming that in, in his neighborhood in front of his apartment building. And I basically went around the corner to a 7-Eleven and just stood outside looking like a freaking hooker. Just st standing at the 7-Eleven, calling the police, like, where are you? And they were like, oh, we finally sent a squad car there. Sorry, we're so late. I guess there was an accident or something. Oh, my boyfriend's coming home. Hold on. Sorry, I had to pause. The boyfriend and the dog came in. So that's basically the end of the story. Well, there's more to him. There's more before what I'm telling you, so I'll have to do that in another story time because there was some crazy crap that went on with him. But that's basically it. So the cops came and he had gone by then and he had left the groceries, which I really didn't want. Went back to my house and I was horrified because he knew where I lived and that was really scary to me. This is the guy that taught me the lesson. Remember in the last story time I told you, do not let men or anybody men women in your house until you know it's serious you know that they're mentally sane because once someone knows where you live and things go wrong he taught me that like you just feel unsafe and at the place that i lived at where he knew i only had one more one more month left on that lease thank god but i was horrified i had people like my girlfriend staying the night with me every night he would send me horrible text messages saying nasty things like the demons are gonna get you you're stupid i'm done with black women i can't believe this he's half black by the way it was just really awkward that went on for a month and literally a month after that happened he had he someone else was pregnant by him which I feel so bad for that woman because she is stuck with that man for the rest of her life. I can't imagine. To this day, I still get emails from him saying, hey, how are you doing? Is everything okay? How are you loving LA? Crazy. So let me know your thoughts on that down below. That was one of the worst nights ever one of the worst dates i don't even know if that's a date it was supposed to be a date we were calling it a date because he was gonna buy the food and cook it for me that was horrible and that just taught me to look at the warning signs like do not ignore them i was really young and i was really bad at noticing the warning signs because there were some blaring like huge warning signs that i should have noticed to like cut this off with this guy after like two dates or three dates not even like two months so i've got more story time friends this isn't even the worst i have more if you want to see more let me know in the comments down below because i have more all right let's jump into some product reviews first up from kevin aquan we have the molten lip color and i have the shade violet quartz i showed this to you guys in my what is that video called? It just went up today. Oh, my colorful summer makeup look. So I'll insert some clips of me putting it on. But look at how gorgeous that is. Oh my God, I love it. It's like a light lavender lilac with really pretty small sparkles in it. I love it. I'll show you me applying it. I love this stuff. And it doesn't dry down super matte and it goes on very creamy and it's very moisturizing. I highly recommend this. And they say that you can use it to like do lip art if you want to because it's so creamy and easy to move around. This Kevin Aquan did send this to me for free. This isn't sponsored. I can do whatever I want with it. But I'm going to pick up the other colors cuz I really like this and you guys know I love color. I mean, hello. I have This is by the way, oh what are they called? I did a full review video on this. Touch and Soul, uh, their eyeshadow wands. This is the glitter. Half of it's a cream lip cream eyeshadow. The other half is a glitter, and I love it. I'll leave a link to it down below. I did a full review video on those a year ago? A while ago. Next up, from many ethnicities, we have their leave-in conditioning cream. Also in that video, I love the smell. It's just a white cream. You can't see that because my camera's so bright, but it's just a white cream. I'll show you clips of me applying it. Put it on your hair. It makes your hair soft. It makes my hair feel moisturized. And that's really important for me because I have very dry hair. So I've really been loving this and I love the smell. It smells like, I don't know, like fresh sea breeze and like fresh clean clothes and clean soap. I'm horrible at describing scents, but it just smells very clean. I like it a lot. It smells really good. There's a giveaway coming with this. I showed you guys that in my colorful makeup tutorial, so that'll be coming probably this weekend. I'm sticking to the schedule. How are we liking the schedule? If you haven't seen my channel announcement video, I'll leave a link to it down below, but I'm sticking to it. Fingers crossed. Second video in, I'm doing good. Hopefully I can keep up with it. 
All right, friends, that is it for me. If you enjoyed this date story time video, let me know down below and I'll keep doing them because I have some more funny ones. Some of them are funny, but some of them like this are just scary. It's funny now, but then it was scary. If there was a lot of background noise, sorry, in Los Angeles, it's starting to warm up. And our place, I've told you guys this, it has floor to ceiling windows, so it gets very hot in here if we close everything. So I try to open it up, but then I try not to put the air on because if I put the air on, I feel like that's even more loud than you guys hearing like cars drive by. So that's it for me. Hopefully you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Check out the videos on the screen and I will see you soon. Ciao.